John Krakauer, during his Memoirs of Ascending Mount Everest, stated that he thrilled in the fresh perspective that came from tipping the ordinary plane of existence on end. How simple a statement to say that you thrill in pushing your own limits, in challenging yourself and taking a risk. Yet women are three times less likely than men to take a risk. So how do we encourage women to be bold? How do we encourage women to push themselves and thrive in unfamiliar situations? A few years ago, I was doing an internship at Goddard Space Flight Center. And within the first week, my supervisor had put a few books on my desk and it introduced me to the iconic physicist Richard Feynman. I started reading these books and I couldn't put them down. Page after page, I wanted more on the bus into work, on the bus home from work. And the thing that struck me the most was how curious Feynman was. Not just regular curious, but aggressively curious. And you saw that in that video earlier with Feynman and his red wagon. Always testing ideas and pushing boundaries. And that kind of curiosity leads to innovation. And we should be encouraging more women towards leading innovation. So today, this is about inspiration. This is about pursuing adventure and revolutionizing what women and men can accomplish in challenging fields like science, engineering, and technology. I'm gonna throw out a few numbers now. Less than 20% of women are enrolled in under engineering undergraduate programs, and even less are enrolled in trades, transport, and construction. And earlier today, I was talking to some guys in the audience, and they already knew this. They had heard by word of mouth that these numbers are so low. But the thing is, these numbers aren't changing. This is a graph, it's pretty basic, has some numbers, has some bars, but I want you to look at that horizontal line across the screen. That means that that 20% number isn't changing. It's not improving and it should be, and that's bad. And that also means that the methods we're using to encourage women to go into science and engineering just aren't working anymore. They're not good enough. A few months ago, the European Commission Science and Innovation Department released a video. And this video was called Science, It's a Girl <laughs> Thing. And the point of that video was to do exactly what I'm telling you today. Encourage you girls in the audience, the next generation of females, to go into these fields. And they tried to show a more glamorous side of science. They had the women in this video wearing dresses and skirts, high heels and makeup, and they had tried to appeal to them on another level. But that video received almost instant and widespread criticism. So much that it was pulled down off the website almost instantly. Time Magazine's online news feed it, even called it breathtakingly sexist. But how can you criticize an organization that recognized we have a problem, that recognized there needs to be a change and try to do something provocative to change that and encourage more girls to go into these fields? So my recommendation is to have more female mentors in engineering and the sciences at the forefront of the media. Have them at the focal point of the media using the internet, using radio, using TV. When I was going through my engineering degree, I only had a handful of female teachers. And when I got my pilot's license, I was lucky to have the only female instructor. So we need better access to some of these trailblazers in these fields. So now I wanna do a little bit of an experiment and I need your help. So you're all gonna have to stand up for me. It'll be like the seventh inning stretch of, of the TEDx youth conference. <laughs> okay, so the rules are simple. I'm gonna say a name if you recognize the name I'm gonna say, stay standing. If you don't recognize the name, take a seat. Okay, so stand if you know, sit if you don't. Kim Kardashian. Awesome. You're all standing for one of the world's biggest reality TV stars. <laughs> Heidi Klum. Awesome. You are still all st mostly standing for a Victoria's Secret supermodel and host of Project Runway. What about Marissa Meyer? All right, I have a little more of you sitting than I expected considering she's been all over the news lately. At 38 years old, she's the CEO of Yahoo, used to work for Google, studied artificial intelligence, and is the youngest person on the Fortune 500. Melissa Pemberton. All right, that's what I thought. I have you all sitting for a girl in her early 20s who performs in air shows all over the world. She has over a thousand hours in multi-performance and aerobatic aircraft. She's an all over daredevil, base jumper and rock climber. What about Lena Gade? 
Nope. She's the first female race engineer to win the Le Mans 24 Hours, an endurance motorsport race. She works for the Audi factory team, and she's in the pit controlling the strategy for all the car racers and getting telemetry from the car. So where are these women? These women who are trailblazers in their field, and yet you know who the reality TV stars are, but not these amazing women who I'm inspired by and who you should be inspired by. So what I have up on the screen now is something that Discovery Channel posts on their website. So if you're a producer that wants to propose a show to Discovery Channel, this is the audience they say you should be looking for. Male between 18 and 49 years old. He comes to Discovery Channel because he knows what to expect. Intelligent television that is also entertaining. His curiosity factor is high, and he asks the simple questions. His science is visceral and experiential. Our job is to give the viewer an experience topped with information he wasn't expecting. He, male, his. Clearly, these networks know their audience and cater to it. That is, after all, how you get ratings. But they should also know that they're in a position of power to start showcasing intelligent women who also want intelligent careers. Come on, like a female version of Bear Girls showing off her survival skills, or an engineer working with some of the most innovative technology in the world? Now, that's pretty inspiring to me. So sure, we can start revolutionizing the way society sees women and what women can accomplish in science and engineering. But I want to emphasize that change must also come with, from within and that we as women need to recognize how much change we can make happen, happen if we believe in ourselves. So as an engineer, I want to pass along some words of advice. One, embrace all of your experiences while tackling your goals. A few years ago, I was selected to participate uh, in a space studies program down at NASA Ames Research Center. So as an aerospace engineer, I'm sure you can imagine I was like beyond excited to go down there. Like dance around in your apartment by yourself excited <laughs> to do this. But it gets better. I could walk a couple hundred feet out of my dorm, like from here to the back of this lecture theater, and there's an old abandoned McDonald's with a skull and crossbones flag hanging in the window. Pretty ominous, but I wandered in anyways. And there, the Lunar Orbiter Image Recovery Project is processing decades-old footage from the moon that has never been seen. Film strips, so many of them in the kitchen of this McDonald's that I could literally breathe them in. And I could walk 100 feet the other way and be dwarfed by one of the world's biggest wind tunnels and the high bay for the vertical simulator. But it didn't hit me how cool this experience was until I'm 18,000 feet in the air with a parachute strapped to my back standing in the open door of a plane, ready to hurl myself out. And if you've ever been skydiving, you're in sensory overload. The sounds are loud, you're getting ready to jump, your adrenaline's going. But right before I jump, I look back. And there's Korea's first astronaut, who is a woman, by the way, with the biggest grin on her face, getting ready to jump after me. And that's when I knew I was in a pretty cool place. So some of my best stories come from my experiences and the lessons I've learned along the way. Recognize that you only need to prove to yourself that you're constantly challenged and always learning. Remember that, constantly challenged and always learning. Realize the impact of a positive attitude. It's so easy to smile. You guys have done it all day today and you continue to do it. And that's what's helped me get through uh, some of the sometimes difficulties of working in a male-dominated industry. Decision-making should be easy. Don't worry about it. You can't really make a wrong decision. You can just make decisions that will lead you down different paths and give you different stories to talk about and different adventures to tell about. If you work hard, help others whenever possible, and enjoy life, everything else will just fall into place. And something that comes with this is appreciating your opportunities and the people that helped you get there. I spent most of my third year of engineering running back and forth from classes to labs to help designing a solar-powered car and then training to drive that car. And by training, I mean driving a prototype on the streets of Calgary, running it on Race City Speedway, and then actually doing physical training with a fitness trainer at the Olympic Oval. I even did a spin class, like riding a bike in sweatshirts, sweatpants and a sweatshirt with the heat turned all the way up, just to simulate the car conditions. But the only reason that I was able to drive that car from Texas to Calgary was because the project engineer decided to take a chance on me. It was a defining moment in my life, and for that, I will be forever grateful. 
So remember, embrace your experiences and appreciate your opportunities. Stay constantly challenged and always learning. Realize the impact of a positive attitude and don't stress over decisions. <clears throat> so I started this talk today with my internship at Goddard Space Flight Center and I want to end it talking about the same summer. So nearing the end of that internship, we were given a day off work to tour the labs at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. So we traveled from lab to lab and at the end of the day we were bring, brought into a lecture theater similar to this one. And we were to hear closing remarks from the president of the university. I thought it was just going to be like any other talk. Thank you for your time. Good luck with the rest of your life in your summer. But when the president started talking, Freeman A. Herbrowski III, I, couldn't, I didn't want the lecture to end. It was like the type of lecture that has you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And he shared with us something that day that I want to share with you today. He said, listen to your thoughts, they become your words. Listen to your words, they become your actions. Listen to your actions, it becomes your character and your character becomes your destiny. And your character has everything to do with how you behave when you think no one else is watching. So today, and from today onwards, start thinking like leaders, start speaking like leaders, start acting like leaders, and you all should start revolutionizing and challenging what young women and men can accomplish in fields that can influence the foundations of our generation and the next.